Hi, welcome to my vlog. This is special vlog of Yogyakarta. Tonight I'm planning to go to somewhere. You guys will gonna know. So let's accompany me and it's gonna be fun because I'm going by myself. Well, I'm arrived in Pasar Seni station and I want to go to Pasar Seni to buy something to eat. Of course, I want to buy some cake. There's a lot of cake here to make me confused. But I'm not gonna buy those cake, just some cake. This cake will be accompanying me on the trip. I can't wait for that. After that, I move to station to print my ticket. And I will cross the road first to the ticket printer right there. Oof. By the way, I got nervous about this trip. But let's get started. And now I'm waiting in line to print my ticket. And by the way, let me eat some food first. I haven't had dinner today. Chicken cordon bleu. This one of my favorite menu. While eating, I want to tell you a story first. Actually, I'm afraid to travel alone, especially out of Jakarta. Like, there's something to help me to stay at home. I'm scared I can do anything out there. But I want to get out of my comfort zone. And I want to explore more about who truly I am. To upgrade myself, just enjoy the life going. If not now, then when? Am I right? Oh, by the way, I'm in the station. It's almost 11 p.m. which I have to get to the train. I don't want to be late. If I can hurry, it won't be a problem either. Now I scan the barcode of my ticket to get into the train. Here we go. I'm walking to the train and I'm gonna find my seat excitedly. Finally, I found my seat and yeah, just sit quietly. It's already dark and I can't see anything except for the street light. They can see here at 11 p.m. Waiting for another passengers, maybe they go home too, but we never know. Damn, I'm so sleepy now. I've been trying to sleep, apparently I can't. But people around me already sleeping. The big question for me now, how? How they can do that? Morning has come and I woke up from a sleep like a chicken. Not restful, yeah, my back is hard. And now, I don't want to sleep anymore. I'm so tired. I think it's better to look a few than sleep. Here we are, Yogyakarta. Finally, I arrived here. I have to finish this journey. Tempuyangan. There's no way to return back to Jakarta. Or home. Day one, it's ready to begin. I'm waiting for someone because I've ordered a motorbike rental for this holiday. Oops, sorry. This trip, I mean. I've met with motorbike winter and now I'm driving motorbike going to the hotel. The weather today is very sunny and the sun is shining brightly. I took a deep breath and yeah, I feel it. On my way to this hotel, it was quite far from the city center. Yeah, around 15 minutes. But it's not barrier for me to explore this city. I've arrived and have also met hotel payment. This is my room. Finally, I can lie down comfortably. I'm gonna take a few minutes to rest, not too long, just a few minutes because I'm excited, I don't waste my time to lying here, sleep and being lazy, so I decided to go out to see what in the city. The first destination is Malibaro Street, one of famous places here, and many tourists also come to here. How is not be famous? This place very clean and organized. My eyes feel comfortable seeing every single place, that effect guys. And I think I wanna take a walk first to look around to pamper my eyes because you know Jakarta is very busy and foggy. Fortunately, not here. I want to refresh my eyesight and vision in my body and don't forget my man too. Here we are. This is the most famous one in this place. This sign. I seen a lot of people capture moment to take a photo in this place. Yeah, maybe to show that they have been to Jogja. I don't know why, suddenly I'm hungry. So I decided to have lunch around Malibara Street. I thought it's kinda weird to eat dumpling at noon. Usually I eat dumpling at night. I can be a reverse person like that. Many seller call the visitor to eat at their song. So it's okay. I will just eat. I'm hungry by the way. After that, I want to go back to the hotel first. I want to take a shower too and also rest for a while. Because tonight I wanna chill in cafe and I wanna see the city view at night. After shower and change the outfit too, I plan to go out to a cafe like I talked before and I've been looking for reference for places to chill at night in Jogja. And you will definitely like this place too. Well, 
This is the place. A cafe located around the Jogja Monument. Kebun Dalam Cafe and Entry. Honestly, this cafe is really good. The interior and outdoor is very aesthetic. And so does with the food and drinks are delicious. Even tough I don't eat heavy food and it's just snacks, but it's good. Oh, by the way, I order a drink red velvet. It is really delicious. The flavor is good and French fries very tasty and savory. So yeah, I'm just enjoying this moment, feel the vibe, and looking at the car and motorbike passing through. I didn't stay too long in this cafe, and I plan to looking for food for dinner. I've been looking for recommendation from TikTok, where is a nice and delicious place for dinner. Without any further ado, I went straight to the parking lot to get the motorbike and just go there. On my way, I passed Malibora Street again, and as you can see, it get busier at night. So it's fun to hang out out here, but until 10 p.m. Because after 10 p.m. the stores are closed. Maybe a government regulation, I guess. Honestly, I still want to be on Malibara Street here, but I want to explore other places too. So now I want to go another place based on recommendation from TikTok for dinner tonight. The place is simple like Angkringan, and even from the TikTok, the food is delicious, and there is live music there. I'm excited. Now we enter the Jogja Northern Square. I don't know what the story here, but I came for dinner. Pondo Pulawas, one of the most popular Angkringan places in Jogja. The place is always crowded, except when it's closed. No one bite anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. How come it's not crowded? The place is clean and cool, and there's live music too. So I enjoy while eating. And besides this, the singers are really good when singing. Their voices are really good. In this Angkringan, there's a lot of food that you will want to eat. You can choose what you want to eat. All the dishes make me starving now. And I can't wait to eat here. I only buy few dishes because it was too late. You know the diet program. <laughs> After dinner done, I go straight back to the hotel because it was too late, almost 12 p.m. I was a little worried and afraid to go home too late and see you tomorrow. Day 2 is began. My morning was greeted brightly. The sun was shining brightly too and I am very excited. Let's start the second day by going to Pambanan Temple. Finally, I was able to go to this temple. As you know guys, this temple has a story that amazed me. How it could be happen in one night. It was like a miracle. This is the main door. I'm excited and I can't wait to enter to it. To see what is in there. Because this is the first time for my experience of going to the temple and try my life. The first thing that we have to do is buy a ticket first. Without this ticket, we can't get to in. So I scan the barcode on the ticket so we can enter to the temple area. Here we are. Fortunately, the weather today is very sunny. Even though it's hot, but it's okay because I already use the sunscreen, so I'm not afraid with the sunlight anymore. Look at my outfit, same like around. Oh yeah, by the way, it takes five until seven minutes to go in Prambanan Temple. This is it, the Prambanan Temple. Finally, I can see with my own eyes. Usually, I only see on social media or on television, but this is real. I amazed. And I don't know what happening here, but the other temple are scattered around. Now it's in the construction stage or what? I don't know. And I'll continue to go closer to the temple to see in detail the layout and the shape of the temple. Yeah, like usual, tourists everywhere. And now I want to enter the main temple to explore more what is inside of the temple. And I'm sure you're curious to what inside. So we are now inside the temple. Obviously, in this main temple, there are four rooms according to the cardinal direction. For example, like on the ways, east, north, and south side. And every room have an arch. For example, in this video, I'm on the south side of the temple. There is arch Mahadeva Siva. And now, I want to move to the north side of this temple. You know, I feel amazed and curious. How could this happen in one night? Is that real in one night? Oof. Now I'm at the Ganesha statue and it look like a real. Even though I don't know the story, but it looked real. So I have finished seeing the statue in the main temple and I went go or left the temple to see another temple around it. 
Finally, I know what the temple out there is destroyed in this area. It was caused by the earthquake on my 27, 2006. I'm so sorry because something like this happened on my birthday. I didn't mean to act like that. Peace, guys. You can see that the temple is very big. It's like wow. The light of the temple is very neat. I'm still thinking about those construction. Is there any tools or anything to put together the temple? Even though there is the missing tool, it seems impossible it happened in one night. What is happened? And I am also sad about the damage caused by the earthquake 2006. We cannot change or make it. We can only accept it. After touring around the temple, I decided to leave the permanent area. Because it's already midday, I wanna launch around permanent temple. But before I leave this temple, I wanna explore more what is around it. Because the way out of this temple is quite long. So I might as well to explore more about this temple. By the way, the view is very beautiful. The winds blow my hair and the trees around cover the hot my sun. Look at this, the temple. Look amazing, doesn't it? And don't forget the weather too, it's very hot. So now I want to rest for a while because my legs are tired from walking. And yeah, we will continue exploring. Now I want to see the museum which displays pieces of the tattoos that have been damaged caused the earthquake 70 years ago. But in this museum, there are not only statues and also traditional Japanese musical instruments such as krimpyong, peki, kempul, gambang, and many more. So they use the museum to provide knowledge for the those who came. I don't know about these tattoos, but it's unique. It has four faces on each side of his head. Thank God he's not a Gemini who has a thousand faces. Just kidding guys. After that, I entered a room that contained other statues. They are look, well, something unique, amazed, and even scary too. After finishing seeing the status in the museum, I decided to leave the museum indirectly to exit of this permanent temple. So, the way of this temple is through the permanent souvenir center. There are many kind of souvenir here, but because I'm so hungry, I didn't buy anything. I directly go to the restaurant around Pramanan. Bumi Bawana, 5.2 km from Pramanan temple. The place is spacious and clean. The outdoor is very aesthetic too, and there's a lot of spot to take a photo. You can go here with your friends or your family. Honestly, the food is all delicious, and including the snacks. Well, this bakwan is my recommendation. The taste of the bakwan is really delicious. And today, I ate banawan fried rice, one of the signature food from Bumi Bawana. It's delicious, and I gave it 8 per 10. After lunch, I rest for a while because the weather today is very hot not a take long let's go well now i am at zero kilometer jogja it's a point that become a benchmark for determining distance between region in jogja or other cities outside jogjakarta I'm planning go to explore again to the north square of Jogja, which is where I went last night. On the way, I saw two cannon statues on the sidewalk, and I was surprised by this statue. Look at that. It's very scary, isn't it? Finally arrived at first, I just want to walk. But the old man offered me to take a ride around in this rickshaw to see around Jogja square. And guess what? I said yes. Because I only paid 10,000 rupiah, it's okay. Instead, it continued on foot. It was quite tired. We start from the Sonobudoyo Museum, which from entering this square. We immediately turn right. The old man planned to take me to the palace, which is behind the north square of Jogja. So I just followed him while exploring more. Let me see what in there. Well, I have entered the palace now. It looks beautiful and cool because there are big trees in the palace area. But it looks quiet now. I don't know why. This palace looks deserted because the way to get inside is closed so visitors cannot enter and only get to the courtyard. Suddenly the old man offered me to take me to the Sultan Square. Mm. But it's okay and I've arrived at one of the characteristics of Jogja Food Center, the Bakpia. 
A lot of my friends recommended buying bakpia. There are three variants of bakpia. There are mukbin, chocolate, cheese, and pineapple flavors. The most I like is the pineapple one. The sour taste mixed with the bakpia dough is very delicious. By the way, the price for one box is only 35,000. Mmm, yeah, I wanna tell you, actually I was only going to the Northern Palace and the old man offered me to go to Southern Square. Why not do it too bro? He said like that. And he said it's only 30,000 rupiah, I will take it back to where you came from early. 30,000 rupiah? It's okay, for round trip. It's not a problem for me. The most important thing is, I can know more about the city. Well, now I arrive at the South Square of Jogja. It looks very different from the North Square of Jogja. Here is not fancy of like in the North. I don't know the story at all. That's what makes me curious more. I try to get closer to the Bay and Tree to see clearly. It's like, wow, the tree is very big. I'm amazed. Not really take a lot of time there just to satisfy my curiosity. After leaving the South Square, I was taken back to where I start by riding his pedicab. Yeah, it's quite far to going back there, but that's okay. I'm happy that I can see and feel the city. Even though not the art place that I'm visiting. After this, I wanna sit back and relax around the 0km point of Jogja. While breathing the air, I'm feeling the vibe of Jogja in the afternoon. And when I'm arrived at 0km Jogja, I want to rest first for a while, release the tiredness that I feel. To be honest, the city is very unique and aesthetic, and with its culture too. The culture is very strong, and I can feel it. How beautiful it is to see the few with car and motorbike passing by this afternoon. Very comfortable. After relaxing and chilling at 0km Jogja, I want to continue my trip to Maliboro Street. This is very enjoyable. There was a place, namely the Maliboro Terrace, because it looked cool and I straight and look at what inside. It is the same as the Jogjakarta Souvenir Shopping Center. A lot of good for sale such as clothes, hat, necklace, and other souvenirs. I really don't have any intention to buy anything, just sit around. And this place is very aesthetic and nice. And outside there was live music too, so I could enjoy the vibe this time, even though I don't understand the meaning of the sound because it's a Japanese song. It's already light today, I don't feel like time has passed quickly and exactly my stomach is starting to get hungry. And let's find a place to dinner. Yeah, I got this place from a TikTok and the food looked really delicious and let's try it. Here it is, mozzarella noodles, one of the best seller here. Let me try it. It's crazy. My stomach is really full. The portion is fairly large and I can't finish at all. And now I'm going back to Maliboro to rest before going back to the hotel. And yeah, I'm very sad because this is my last day in Jogja. And I'm so happy with this journey. And thank you for you guys who have seen this video and accompany me until here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you want me to do on the next video. See you next time. And thank you for watching.